Get up in the morning. We go down to the, you got your stuff all set up. And okay, we're going to call to order the regular meeting of July 25th, 2022. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Dixon. Here. Salvia. Here. Albrecht. Here. Gould. Here. Harrison. Here. Peterson. Here. Sage. Here. Thank you. Would you please rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, and welcome on this beautiful night, beautiful summer night. Um, first, we have public comment scheduled and non-scheduled presentations. Uh, is there any public comment to start? Did you, did you have a comment? Well, is this just the regular public or are you doing the presentation first? Well, I was going to do regular public first and then the presentation. Okay. Come on up. Okay. Patricia Kane, 817 West 4th Street, Rochester. This is redundant. We're still in the same situation with what appears to be like car lights through our entire house. I was at planning uh, last Thursday. I am told them I will forward photographs through the manager's office that even show how bad it is through my foliage, which people think for some reason hides it. It doesn't. You would be hard pressed to find someone that wants to buy a house in Rochester anywhere with what headlights through your entire house. There's no reason those lights should still be there. But I think what I'm more upset about is we're not moving along with something that can do something about this. The guy is literally just blowing Nick off. He couldn't care less. So his whole demeanor is, don't respond, don't answer, don't do anything. When you have garage lights even on the face of your garage, it's for your driveway. Not my driveway across the street, not my bedroom, not my porch, not all the way through my house, and not 60 feet up my driveway. That's my right. And I think what bothers me most is that we have ordinances in place that protect trespass. Limbs, trees, branches over your property, a vine, even flowers, trespass, you have the right to cut them down or remove them. Neighbor puts garbage on your property, you have the right to remove, it's a trespass. If a neighbor builds over, it's a trespass on your property and you can actually have it removed or demolished. If someone puts a car in your driveway, you can have it towed, it's a trespass. I'm wondering, if, even with snow, if somebody shovels their snow into your property, even in front of your house, it's a violation. And you can't get the lights out of the inside of my house and my bedrooms? How many thousands do I have to spend to live in a box and still not have use of my porch? So that's where I'm at. But I'm, what I'm very frustrated about, and I'm not going to get into the health implications, I'm not getting into the other stuff, but I will tell you this. The rights to the interior of my house are gone. I keep asking the same question, I get no answer. Who owns my house? Who owns the actual brick and mortar? The neighbor, the city ordinances, or me? Who owns the interior of my home? I've been met with nothing but the look. I'm tired of it. I feel I have been played, strung along, strung out, made promises to, given communications, multiple photographs. If you want a thousand photographs, I'll give you a thousand. You want a hundred, I'll give you a hundred. Whatever you want, I have done. I've also copied on light pollution. I've copied on being a good neighbor. I have copied everything, including ordinances. And I stand here tonight without the rights to my home, the peace and use and enjoyment of my home is denied because it is given to a neighbor across the street. I can't ask you when you're going to get it done because obviously you're not. So I will tell you tonight, by the next meeting, I'd like to see the ordinance of light ordinance changed. And I want it changed like many multi municipalities have done. Your light is shielded and it stays on your property only. Many municipalities have gone to it all over the United States without a problem. City's problem is we keep going to Eagle. Eagle is not the Bible of how to live. Eagle is still outdated and outmoded just like Michigan is. And 
and talking to the state, this municipality has the absolute right to change those ordinances without a problem. You know what it takes? Get it done, do it, and vote. And guess what? I could live in my house like all of you do. That's it. I want the night. I want to use my porch. I'm tired of being devalued, and I'm tired of paying on property that I can't use, and I'm tired of looking at headlights through my, that are his lights. They have no business being there. So I don't know how to proceed next. You're going to have to tell me because I have tried and did everything you've asked, and I really feel I've been just kicked like a can down the street. Comments? Comments? I guess I have a question. Nick, Council were you able to, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Were you able to? <clears throat> he won't respond. I put in writing, because it ever came. He's just not willing to discuss it. There's not a violation, so we can't write them legally. Well, in a way, I think it is a violation. It says that lights can't be directed into a bedroom. He is light. If I open my bedroom closet, it ends on my bedroom wall, the closet wall inside <coughs> above my clothes, and it lights my clothes. He lights the lock on my front door. You know how vulnerable that makes me? He interferes with my vision for safety. Those aren't violations. It's a headlight look. It's not like it's the moon above here. It's right here. <coughs> the glare is unbelievable. And if people have left, what do you want me to do, live in a box? Never use my porch? I'm charged with taxation on my porch. We haven't been able to use it comfortably at all. For how long? That's a part of our refuge. It's our quiet time. The ordinance creates it because it allows it. And the only way to get rid of it is change the ordinance so it's appropriate. If you want to say it's complaint driven to any level, you need to take a look at these levels because what this ordinance created is a nuisance and an annoyance. And it's not being looked at appropriate. The city needs to stop defending the offender on someone else's property. I'm certain if I parked my car in his driveway, it would be towed. <clears throat> I am certain that if I put up a huge light into all of his windows, of course he lives shuttered up anyway, it would be a problem if I did it to a neighbor. It would be a problem. People don't do that except for him. And there has to be an avenue because this has now been a problem. We haven't had to approach this like this with this house until he moved in. And I'll tell you, those lights are like prison lights, and there's no reason for it. And any reasonable person will tell you, if you've got a 20-foot driveway, you don't have to light over 100 feet beyond it. So is it harassment? Is it annoyance? Does he have to watch every move we make in our house, on our property? You tell me, because that's where I'm, that's where I'm at, and I don't know how to do this anymore. And if the city can't accomplish it, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? Live the rest of my life with this glare and these headlights? I've shown you the pictures. Should we put the pictures up next meeting? That's where I'm at. Thank you. Um, Mr. City Manager, how about you staff come up with a, I don't know, a final report on this situation? Is that, so then we'll have something in front of us, the steps you've taken, okay. and then we'll have that in front of us at the mm -hmm. next meeting, and then at least we can do something, not do something, but we'll have it all here and we can talk about it. Okay. Mayor, okay. Uh, Council Member Albrecht. Uh, if, if I may, may Mayor, um, could we look at, um, you know, Google search some other lo local cities to see if there is such ordinances uh, that address the issue that Ms. Kane's having as there, part of your There report. are. We know that yeah, for a fact. It's just up to us to have to pull that trigger. Although there are. She's right. Shielding yeah. is the simple answer. It could be that simple. So, uh, okay. Do, do any of those municipalities have an ordinance that says such that your light cannot exceed your property line? But light source is different than light measuring. So our light measuring says you can't go past property line. It doesn't. But she's right. The, the source, you can see it. Every house in town with the porch light, you can see. So shielding prohibits, prohibits the actual light source from being seen. Councilmember Peterson. 
Uh, no, thank you. Oh, okay. No, no, I was going to, but it's. Yeah. I got it. Okay. Okay, I'll have it for you. Thank you. Um, next is the presentation of the Good Neighbor Award. Um, Rachel, if you want to come up and say something, then I also I have a plaque I can read as well when you're done. Thank you, Council. Um, we are presenting the, well, not presenting, but she will be receiving the plaque and the gift card. Uh, we, she will be receiving it is Shelly Davis. Uh, two years ago, Shelly left a note on Councilwoman Harrison's door, uh, along with all other neighbors on the block asking for empty cans to return. The money she collects through these can donations goes directly toward the Michigan Humane Society, who doesn't love dogs. She has many neighbors who contribute and has kept this initiative going over the course of several <laughs> years. Uh, so we awarded her the Good Neighbor Award for the second quarter. Great. And then we have a plaque that says the Rochester City Beautiful Commission, and I think also City Council. Present Shelley Davis with the Good Neighbor Award for making a difference in the Rochester community <coughs> 2022. And we also have a little gift for you. So why don't you come on up? Is she she's here? Not here. She's, no, not here. No, she's not here. No, she's not here. <laughs> here, I'll give this Where's to Where's the Rachel. photo op? <laughs> yeah. She's very humble and... Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say congratulations to Shelly, and I will uh -huh. deliver the, the gift and the plaque to Shelly the next time she picks up my cans. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. She's Thank you, very wonderful, and I'm glad we get to recognize her in this way. Thank you. Okay, are there further comments? Any calls? Look like thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's no public comment. Okay, thank you, Brian. So, as um, just like to, to read that, as many people know, there is a city council opening. I imagine we'll be talking about that later in the show, in the show, in the meeting, um, the show as well. Um, and so, today was the deadline technically to, to show an interest. Technically, um, as the mayor pro tem said, you could send in anything at up to midnight tonight to the city clerk, you can email it. But as of now, we have, and this is in front of everybody, we have Debbie Allen, Christian Hauser, Richard Kenziak, Marilyn Trent, Terry Tesh, and Rachel Moore um, has, have expressed an interest. So at the next meeting, those are the people that we will be considering for um, appointment to the city council. All those people, and they will receive a correspondence from the city clerk that they have, um, we're going to allow them to give a brief introduction about themselves if they choose. They do not have to if they do not want. And we have two weeks to the next meeting for city council members if they choose to reach out or if those people choose to reach out to council people. Um, so that's where we are. And um, we will be debating it and, in theory, voting on it or you know, discussing this at the next meeting. Um, in August. So that is the plan. Any questions, comments? Councilmember Albrecht. Just the one uh, name you mentioned, uh, Leanne put on that uh, she's not registered to vote, so uh, Rachel Moore is not a oh, okay. candidate. The well, last communication I heard from Ms. Um, Moore is that she would be registering to vote, and technically if she's registered to okay, vote by yeah. next, so I will, I'll update that as... Okay. As, it happens. I right. just and wanted it for the record. Exactly. And, so, and you. in theory, you do not have to be registered to vote to serve on city council. That charter requires yeah, that you have be, to be a registered, registered, okay, a registered you, elector, so. 25 years of old, and resident of one, at least one year. And be a registered voter? Yes. Okay. I didn't think I saw that, but okay. There. So, uh, she, so she needs to get registered in the next two weeks. That's what we're saying. Okay. Further comments? Okay, so we will have that uh, discussion at the next meeting. <clears throat>
Uh, next is the approval of the minutes, the consideration of the minutes of the special meeting of July 7th, 2022, and the regular meeting of July 11th, 2022. If you remember, we had two meetings last time. I'll make a motion to approve both, but I have a question on the special meeting. Okay, so a motion by Council Member Peterson. Support, support and I have support a by Council Member Albrecht. And I have a question, I just have a comment that I already talked to Leanne about on the June, July 11th meeting. Okay. You want to just say what that is? Yeah, yeah. I, I think ahead. Leanne probably made the change electronically already. It said on, in the packet it had June 27th, 2022 on the top of page 10 instead of July 11th. The other two pages had the right date, so uh, Leanne said she had already changed it, so I just want to make sure that was. Thank the, you. Okay. And then Council Member Peterson. Yes, thank you, Mayor. So all I wanted was clarification from administration under the motion um, to um, that was made to direct administration to bring um, back to city council within six months new plans for renovation at the house. What does the new plans mean since we've spent money already on oh, plans? I I, I'll try to, Nancy, if you don't mind if I take a shot at this one. I, I think a plan for how we're moving forward, not necessarily new plans, because new plans would be a building plans and expenditures with the consultant. So I think the plan as to how we want to look forward and, we're going to try to not wait that long and see if we can get it here earlier. So, but I don't believe it was meant to mean new plans like building plans or site plans or anything like that. We just have that like change then. Fine. So, yes, that would be great. Agreed. Okay, thank okay. you. Further discussion? <clears throat> Madam Clerk, to roll, please. Bixon? Yes. Salvia? No. Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Okay, next is approval of the consent agenda. First is consideration of special event application from Dysotonania International to hold the POTS 5K on Saturday, October 2nd in Municipal Park and Riverwalk Trails. Next is consideration of a special event application from Paint Creek Trailway Commission to hold the annual Labor Day Bridge Walk and Run on Monday, September 5th in Municipal Park and the Paint Creek Trail. Next is consideration of a special event application from the Paint Creek Center for the Arts to hold the annual Art and Apples Festival on September 9th through 11th in the Municipal Park. I think fall is on the horizon. And next is a review of the current special event calendar. Motion to approve. Motion by Council Member Peterson. Support. Support by Council Member Sage. Discussion, uh, the Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I'd like to pull item <coughs> C, the Arts and Apples Festival. Okay. Is there, so we're now voting on A, B, and D. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Bixon? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Your pro tem, Salvia. Thank you. Um, so regarding arts and apples, I know there have been several meetings. Um, so I'm not sure if the app, I see several members of the applicants or the chief could speak to, how are we going to handle the shuttles and parking regarding the community house uh, parking lot? Yeah. Um, Can you want to come up? And just for the record, your name and address. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Sean Hayes. I'm the executive director at Paint Creek Center for the Arts. Welcome. Sorry. Um, I'm a resident of Clarkston. I'm representing a business at 407 Pine Street. Um, so we have talked to the community house a little bit. And um, I know we've gone back and forth on what the parking situation is. We would just be doing the, um, the bus drop-offs there. Uh, the parking would still say as far still stay as far as like the shuttles and everything would be at the high school as they've been in the past. So where would the shuttle drop off be? Um, the drop off would be at um, I know it's Gate Three. I can't remember the name of what the actual street is. Kind of the entrance closest to the. Um, yeah. yeah, I just want to make sure we've addressed safety, which I'm yeah, sure Chief yeah. has. <laughs> Chief, welcome. Thank you. Yes, we have worked with the, uh, the community house uh, in order to still have the shuttles uh, unload there in the community house parking lot while still having parking restricted so that people will be able to use the community house for the, the weekend event. 
We've worked with uh, Mr. Smith to make sure that participants that are there have some type of placard or something on their car that will indicate so that the Civil Air Patrol people that usually man that gate will be able to let those vehicles in as well as the shuttles um, so that we don't have any. Uh, we looked at a number of different avenues for the shuttles. None of those certainly offered the safety or proximity to the event as continuing to use the community house parking. So we believe we've worked that out um, so that it can be safe and effective. Uh, motion to approve the event as presented. Okay. Support. Do we need a separate motion? Yes, Here. Your Honor. Motion by the Mayor Pro Tem, support by Council Member Harrison. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Vixen? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank you, and good luck with Art and Apples. Thank you. Thank you. Good weather. Good weather. Yes. <laughs> Um, tonight we have do not have any old business or table. Just, well, with the executive director still here. Last year there was. Um, uh, uh, ex ex we have a question. Executive director. Yes, we have a council member uh, has a question. Last year when I went there was uh, like a, an, an opening. I want to say ribbon cutting. Mayor, I think you were involved. Are, are you going to do that same thing again this year? On it was like Friday at four o'clock or something like that. Yes, we've spoken to the chamber of commerce about that. That we'll do on the ribbon cutting opening reception at four o'clock on Friday. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, that was a fun event last year. I think we had the band, high school band out there, and that was, that was nice. And it was beautiful weather. Um, we do not have any old business or table items tonight. We do not have any public hearing for legislative deliberation. We have a consideration of an ordinance amendment to Chapter 32, Offenses, Second Reading and Adoption. Mr. City Manager. City Attorney. Yes, thank you. Um, before you is for second reading and adoption is the um, there's uh, three separate uh, ordinance uh, changes. Um, you looked at this uh, a while back, uh, a few meetings ago, and the first one is a brand new one called cr criminal conduct causing a police response. Um, and my memo uh, does go through that uh, as well. The the second one is the disorderly conduct ordinance, which is section 20, excuse me, 32-246 which uh, further expands what would constitute disorderly conduct. And uh, finally, the um, uh, a new section 32-314, uh, which pertains to the discharge of uh, uh, bows and crossbows. If uh, The only change from uh, the first reading and introduction was uh, the expansion of that last ordinance, which uh, pertains to, we uh, included uh, <coughs> Other things similar. I think the examples were the um, throwing axes and other pointed, uh, pointed instruments. Um, so, other than that, uh, they are as you, uh, as you received it last time, and move for first reading and introduction. If city council wishes to move forward, the action would be to move it for second reading and adoption. Very good, council. So Mo moved. Motion by Councilmember Peterson. Support. Support by Councilmember Albrecht. Discussion. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Vixen? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? No. Sage? Yes. Thank you. Next on to reports on regular business is a consideration of a mayoral of nomination of the principal shopping district. I would like to nominate Karen Malsbury to that post. And that will be considered at the next council meeting for approval. That's awesome. Next is the consideration of a city council nomination to the ZBA. Council. Sure, I'd like to nominate Ray Thietlin okay. to the position of the ZBA. Okay, and that will also be brought up at the next uh, meeting. Uh, next is a consideration of request to approve the mill and overlay road projects for fiscal year ending 2023. Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Council. Uh, we told you that we'd keep things moving once we had our discussion a couple of weeks ago, a couple of meetings ago about how to spend our bond proceeds. And Alec, you want to work your way up here. Um, you did a great job uh, putting together this report. We, I don't want to steal his thunder, but there's a bunch of factors. No, that's okay. A bunch of factors that uh, we looked at, and staff is very excited to be able to make a difference in a lot of streets. And you can see, uh, thank you, Jason, for went out and took pictures of the streets. And then Alec put together this report, um, and I believe 
it's a very good expenditure for our dollars, and, and we, we got some uh, favorable pricing, and we're going to get it done in, by this fall. Okay. Right, Jace? To Alex? So that's the goal. So, Alex, if you want to go over a little bit of the thought process behind it, that'd be great. Yep. So um, the memo listed out seven different sections of road, mostly on the west side of town. Uh, this would be a two-inch mill and overlay. Um, looking at roads with a lower paser rating, you know, from two to four, two to five. Um, we received three quotes from different companies, with the lowest one coming in at $255,400 from Asphalt Specialist. Um, so with that price, we keep looking at possibly doing another road as well. Um, so staff will be looking into some options there as well. So our requested action tonight would be to have a motion to approve the expenditure with ASI. And so if approved, we'll get working on scheduling as soon as possible. So moved. Uh, go ahead. Well, for, uh, Councilmember Albrecht first. Yeah, uh, yeah I wanted to okay. have a question first. Yeah. Um, I, I saw the Delta was $44,600. Um, you're going to go look at it again. Did, was there, do you have thoughts of where that, extra, will we get an extra road or two roads? I, I mean, I love the fact that we're going to address seven areas on six streets. Can we get eight streets, or what? What do you think that forty-four thousand six hundred we have left over will will buy? There are some other sections of roads in the same area with some lower paser ratings. Uh, we also have a section that um, at the end of Helen that connects to Alice Street that needs to be paved here soon too. Um, so there are there are some other options we can look at. Will they be able to get that done bef in 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 with this packet if we if we go back to if if we approve tonight this group? And, and add one or two roads, and it stays under the $300,000, will they be able to get done in the fall? We'd have to get back to them, but I'm sure if we tomorrow right away reached out to them and tried to get quotes on some other sections and get up them in by the next meeting. That's what I'm saying. If we yes. approve to buy the, the Delta by the next meeting, you, they hopefully get it done. I just think this is such a visual, visual project that our residents are going to see. You know, we're, we're taking money and, and improving roads, and they're going to see it when they drive these roads. So if we can get the biggest bang for our buck, that's all I'm advocating. Yep. Thank you. Councilmember Gould? Uh, that, was, that was my question. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Peterson, did you say that you had a motion? I just made a motion to approve as presented. Thank you. Motion by Councilmember Peterson. Support. Support, Support by Councilmember Gould. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Thank you. Um, so about a year ago, I remember I had a resident ask, you know, does Rochester always do complete streets? You know, do you always do all the way down? And I said, no, we don't. Um, you know, as the infrastructure committee, we have a plan where we want to do complete streets, but quite frankly, it's too expensive to always do a complete street. So I said, normally we spend about a hundred, about four hundred thousand on mill and fill, um, and that's what we've done in the past few years. Um, you know, when we mill and fill a road, it extends the life by five years on average. Um, and when we do a complete street, you're going to get maybe 20 plus years. So, um, you know, these projects and the source of the funds are 20 year bond proceeds. So year six through 20, the city is still going to be paying for those bonds, even though the life of this maintenance will have been expired. So based on the source of the funds, um, while it passes the legal rules regarding using bond funds, to me it fails kind of a, a common sense test regarding funding. So I will be a no vote. Further comments? Madam Clerk, the roll please. Vixen? Yes. Salvia? No. Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank you. Next is a consider. Thank you, Alex. Next is a consideration of the quarterly finance reports with budgets amendment. Treasurer Maggio. Hello, Council. <laughs> Were we all supposed to say hello, Finance Director? <laughs> I said hello. <laughs> My nothing is more exciting than oh my gosh, where am I at here? Eleven. Than a council meeting on a Monday night in the summer. Beautiful is that what you were summer trying to night. Say? Man, I need new glasses. Right D. there. Right there. Yep. D. Right Thank there. you. Yep. All right. Before you tonight, we have the quarterly report uh, ending as of June 30, 22. 
Um, and this is the second year that we continue to do quarterly reports, uh, including June 30th. Typically, the audit is your final numbers. That will still happen when the audit is complete. But I want to keep us on the amendments and where we're at, uh, timely and quarterly versus uh, waiting for the actual audit to be completed. Uh, where we're at with COVID fund at this moment in time, uh, as of 6.30, we did receive the other tranche, the second tranche, uh, July 1st. So on the next quarterly, you'll see that flip. But this is where we were as of 6.30. And this is the tranche dollars here from the prior year, and then we'll have the other 695 added in for um, the upcoming uh, quarterly for September. Um, we were at negative 321, 339. And then for the parking, this has been the one that's been the most ongoing since council had made the changes. We have the new meters, we have the new um, effects. This is now going to remain static. Um, there's not a real good way to correlate anymore the impact on COVID with the rates being adjusted, new meters put in, and new improvements being done. So we're starting to, for the most part, come to a close on what remaining items are still impacted uh, on the near term. And then on the outstanding grants, there's currently a just under 30,000 still pending, not counting the other second half that, that came in already, uh, that we're waiting to hear back on. So I'm hoping to receive that other, just under 30,000 sometime in the next, well, hopefully month or two, but it takes a while to run through all of the um, vetting, insurance questions, and all the uh, program red tape um, with any sort of federal funds, which is normal. Um, on the amendment side, there's a few things I want to run through to make council aware of, of some larger things that's happened. Um, we've had the LED street lighting conversion that was completed early last year. And uh, at the time I said, you know, as much as I trust DTE's ROI numbers that they provide, I wanted to see what the actual savings ended up being at the end of the year. Um, it did come right near with what their projection was. So for each year going forward, um, for each year, both the year we're in now and rolling forward, a 36000 decrease in the electricity costs for the DTE-owned um, uh, streetlights that we pay the electric for. The other one is uh, we touched a little bit a few months ago, and that's um, government's least favorite friend and favorite friend at the same time, and that's inflation adjustments. So we have two things that are largely related to the inflation, and that is uh, the property taxes are set to have either by inflation or no more than 5%. As of the most recent figures last month, we're trending over 7 So there, there will be a 5% change in taxes for this upcoming year. The reason that figure is in here is because of the effect it has on what we budgeted for at 3% to 5%, so that 2% delta, and then that's gonna roll forward each year. So each e increase is gonna keep compounding. So when we look at the multi-year budget, we got 308 in one year, a double compounding for the next year, and so on. The um, other thing that's related to inflation is the state revenue sharing. And we get a portion of that based on the sales tax. With goods and things being more expensive, um, the unfortunate part of that trickle-down effect, fortunate part on us, is that means it's more revenue sharing, right? So as, as, the, as the state tax 6%, the sales tax, the more expensive goods are, the more money ends up flowing through uh, to the local units. And then we also have the results on our bidded uh, workers' comp premium. So from what was in the budget to what the bid was, was 30000 decrease, and just looking to make that as a, f we talked about it when we awarded the, the workers' compensation in June, but I wanted to make it as a formal uh, <coughs> amendment. The remaining items below here, these are all things that were approved already in the budget for the prior fiscal year. 
and they were, they're at various stages. They may not have started yet. They may be tied to other projects. They may not be complete yet. And we're looking to roll forward all of these dollars that were unspent in the prior budget and roll them forward into the current budget. Um, I'm happy to go through the list. Just a couple highlights. Uh, the park pathways, we usually do that on purpose because what we'll do is we'll roll forward combine kind of two years at once and then do a larger section of the park paths. And then of course we have the uh, Helen Street project that's currently still being completed. So we have the remaining billion dollars into the next year, as well as the uh, GBB park buildings and then vehicles. We've started getting some tentative delivery dates like September, so it will be a October for the ambulance, so we're mm. only two years from order to, well, <laughs> still haven't gotten delivery. Yeah. If, if it happens, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So that's the list of these projects here that we want to roll forward uh, into the new year. What does this look like for the um, interactive model? So I just put the static one in here as a snapshot. So as referenced, the currently adopted budget is the red, right? And the blue line is break even. So in the budget, we have the small surplus, and then we still have the future years where we're at the uh, lower, uh, about 500,000 on the deficit side. With the changes on the compounding, for instance, it becomes 308 in 23-4, uh, in and then 622 in 24-5. That's the most significant of them that rolls forward and makes the uh, the delta get smaller. Now, as contracts come up, we're going to have to keep negotiating prices as things come in. We talked about it during the night at the infrastructure special meeting about costs are going up and these projects are getting more expensive. So um, we're aware of that. Obviously, expenses <coughs> will continue to, to offset some of that as well. And then the revenue sharing, that's the compound effect each year over year. Um, the state gives us these numbers, and they're saying 5% increases uh, for two more years as of the latest conference in May. Um, and then we have the LED savings. So what does that mean at the end of it, current year? And this, this is without the roll forward projects. If we approve the projects, they'll go, they'll go into the budget. Um, we have two, it will end up at a positive 213.307. That puts us at uh, next fiscal years, so 23-24 almost to zero, it's basically a rounding error at $25,000, and then at 24.5 positive on the 212. So these are, those are the largest changes that are relevant um, for the quarter to date. And with that, Mayor, I will turn uh, over for any questions. I have a few. Mayor Pro Tem Sylvia. Thank you. Thank you, Finance Director Maggio. I have a few questions, three. Sure. Um, so let's start with the parking fund. So page 81, If I don't know if you have the packet up there. Yep, this is okay. the packet up here. So I'll go to mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not page 81. 79 is the parking fund. Let's go to 79. So on the parking fund, in the, the light blue on the left, I added up all of the budgeted revenues, mm -hmm. and I added up all the... Um, actual pre-audit and it looks like we're about $75,000 positive on revenues mm -hmm. um, and then on the expenses at the <coughs> bottom again added up the blue compared it to the pre-audit and it looks like we spent about $12,000 less than we thought mm -hmm. so both good news stories Correct. so where does that call it plus $75,000 on the revenue. Where does that money go? Does it Correct go into, into the, the fund parking balance. fund balance? It does. Okay, so it rolls forward. Correct. Okay. Awesome. So parking is doing better. It is uh, proud to report that number wise, everything is panning out to, to what we had projected and talked in uh, the advisory committee. It, it's We're realizing almost spot on with what we thought would happen. Right, so even though we've, you know, changed parking in lieu and done, done some things, parking is doing better. And then also on this one, there was some unscheduled maintenance that was referenced. What was that? In the parking, um, I'll, I can get details on which one that was. 
I'm, not, I'm trying to think if that was the bridge or the uh, the wall repair. I'll, I'll find out okay. what, what repair that was. Okay. That was in the parking structure, correct? Um, well, it's it's line item here is right. unscheduled maintenance, and it just says contractual services for parking. Okay. Oh, that's, Got it. I didn't want to say for sure. I wasn't one hundred percent. Yeah, oh, that's what I thought it was. Got it. <laughs> it was uh, yeah damages uh, in the lots. So yeah, the that would be unexpected. Um, okay, so then or, or expected. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one of the two. <laughs> Depend on what day, what time. I know. They can only get hit so many times for the right. Something time. happens. Mm -hmm. All right. So then, how about fund balance, page eighty-one, on facilities and grounds in the discretionary in general? Mm -hmm. At the last quarterly report, we had one hundred and eighty-four thousand thirty-nine, and continued out. What was the change? Uh, we haven't we haven't had the, uh, some of the expenses. So some of the ones in the budget roll forward, um, we, we had like for instance eighty thousand unused for the city hall building. I mean, we're not even asking to roll forward that entire amount. Um, the other large chunk of that is the um, all abilities park. So our match part is seventy five thousand for that grant. Well, we haven't executed it yet or had those expenses so that 75,000 comes off so on the projected side prior year goes up and then so future year goes mm -hmm. up but we haven't actually expended them yet okay okay that makes sense and then last question is on the page 76 and this is the quarterly revenue Quarterly revenue related to building permits. Mm -hmm. um, I know there was an adjustment made that was noted in the um, the building report we received for June. Does this number include that adjustment? Uh, yes, this is everything paid to date, which would have that in there. Through June. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's this is actual cash numbers. Okay. Thank you. That answers my questions. Mm -hmm. Any questions, for Anthony? Anthony, while you're up there, are there any questions on the receipt of the check register reports? Okay, very good. Thank you. Uh, uh, we need a motion. Uh, a motion. Yeah, yeah amendments yeah. Uh, uh, would be a motion uh, if council so chooses. So moved. Motion by Council Member Peterson. Support. Support by Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Further discussion? Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Bixon? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank, Thank you. Council. Thank you. Next, receive a report from the various boards and commissions. Receipt from the report from the Rochester Hills Public Library. Is there Mr. City Manager? Is there? Um, I'm not sure who okay. would have been there. Things are going very well at the library. I have a question. Council Member Harris. Okay, may, I, I am just curious. This is the, the second time this yeah. has happened. So yeah, there must be a breakdown in communication. And I'd say it's very uncharacteristic of Julianne. Um, so let's just make sure that we are actually making contact with someone before we put them on the. I thought we were. So obviously we weren't. Okay. So yeah. we'll bring this back. Yeah. If well, they had a meeting, right? I, yeah. Well, there's a lot in the agenda that was in our packet, so I think we need a report out. Yeah. I think so, too. And it's been a while, yes, too. Yes. And if it's a, our liaison, that should be addressed as well. Got it. Yeah. Next, we have a report from the City Beautiful Commission. Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Mayor. We hosted our second annual dog washing fundraiser on Saturday. Thank you to the mayor and other council members for attending and washing a dog we really appreciated your support this was such a fun event uh, it was a little rainy so our turnout wasn't as good as we had hoped but i still feel like the city beautiful commission and the rochester pollinators were well represented all of the proceeds that are raised for uh, at events like these go to native plant gardens throughout the community and our, our mural initiatives which I hope continue so um, thank you for everyone who brought their dog out I think someone commented there are a lot more clean dogs in the city of Rochester thanks to the CBC <laughs> 
Uh, we also, at our meeting, talked about the Rochester pollinators. Uh, they raised $1,850 <laughs> in their native plant sales at the farmer's market, which I just thought was unbelievable. So congratulations to them. Our, um, our member, Janine, has taken over the Dinosaur Hill Garden Maintenance, so she is working on keeping that a beautiful space. Uh, there was an invasive species removal behind the municipal park garden that was very well attended. Our cemetery plants are in, and we continue to work on the Paint Creek Bridge Garden. Uh, we also planted a weeping willow tree in the municipal park. We discussed the all abilities uh the new All Abilities Park that we got grant funding for. We're discussing the location, which needs to be decided on still. And we also talked about our Good Neighbor Award. Thank you for recognizing Shelly Davis. I hope that more good neighbors get nominated. That form is online. So I want to encourage everyone in here and listening to please submit a good neighbor to be recognized. And we have the honor of having our chair here as well. So I'd just like to ask if there's anything I missed, Rachel, please feel free to add. Not to put you on the spot. Uh, we would just like to thank uh, Councilwoman Harrison for her uh, support and position on the board. We wish her the best of luck in her next adventure, and we're so grateful for her guidance, support, and wisdom always. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Councilmember Member um, on, on the agenda, you <clears throat> talked about the Howlett Park, and I know I brought that up with, to, with a couple of meetings ago. Have we gotten the money for the, those two trees for that uh, person who had the penalty? From yes, the but he can't pl we won't plan until the fall. Oh, I, I, yes, yeah, we got That's it. what yep. you said. I just uh, want to make sure. He, he apologized profusely. He said, I didn't forget. Well, I kind of forgot. <laughs> so, okay. okay, so we've got, we, they will be planned. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Next is um, a report from Rara. Councilmember Albert. Uh, Rara met on July 13th, um, and uh, we had four uh, items. We approved the 2023 to 2025 budget. Um, we also, uh, in our building, uh, we have a, a, a long term lease uh, with Flipspot that was up for renewal, and we were able to negotiate a new lease, uh, a 10 year lease that has been executed. We did provide them six months of free rent to pay so that they can uh, <clears throat> put in air conditioning for that area uh, uh, as sort of a, um, um, just to help them along. Um, as I do every month when I report out from Ra Ra, our registrations, and I, 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 say, I say that each month that one of these months it's going to drop off, and at the meeting they said it'll be July, but year to date, if I take uh, January through July, um, excuse me, January through June, we've, uh, we have versus 2019 pre COVID numbers. We're up 723 registrations. So 5,600 versus 4,900 for the month of June, which is where we thought we might drop off. Uh, we were up 352 registrations, 1100 versus 800. So, uh, the trend continues to be our friend and I'm sure one month I'll say we've dropped down a little bit, but we've built up a nice nice delta to show that we're ahead of uh, uh, pre-COVID numbers. Um, uh, lastly, uh, we are, if you drive down 2nd Avenue, you'll see a lot of roofing materials in the parking lot, which is the uh, uh, prepping us for to replace the much needed roof repair for uh, uh, our building there. Um, and um, once they're waiting for a couple more uh, uh, pieces to come in, but we anticipate those will be done in the month of August, uh, maybe into early September. Again, that's very critical because uh, a lot of the leaking when it does rain or in the snow comes through uh, the dance studios where the you know kids are dancing and everything else like that. So um, long overdue, so I'm glad we were um, able to do that, and we will be funding that by, based on the sale of the 480 building, which, um, you know, when it's official, I will report that out. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, next is a very exciting report from the OPC. It Mayor is a Pro very, it is a very exciting report. So on July 19th, the governing board of the OPC and the rebranding committee met. 
and voted unanimously for a new brand for the OPC. Do you want to know? Do you want to know what it is? <laughs> Viva 50 Plus. Yay! Applause, class. <laughs> <laughs> so, Viva 50 Plus Social and Activity Center. And um, when uh, Renee Courtright and the finance director come to our council meeting on August 8th, they will give, um, as part of their budget presentation, they will also give a bit of a presentation on the process and what we've gone through in terms of rebranding and studying and public feedback. Um, so that, I think, will give some good insight to not only all of council, but um, our public. And um, also, it should be noted that this is, there will be a legal uh, DBA filed doing business as, because the legal name will remain the OPC, the Older Person Commission. So this is a rebranding, so technically you could still write a check to OPC, you could write a check to Viva 50 Plus. This is really a forward-looking refresh of the brand um, for our very cherished um, center here. Very good. Will there be bumper stickers? <laughs> there will be bumper stickers, there will be hats, there'll be t-shirts, there'll be a ribbon cutting, a ribbon cutting with the history wall. <clears throat> it's going to be super exciting. Very good, thank you. Uh, next is a report from the Paint Creek Trailway Commission, Council Member Sage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was unable to attend uh, the meeting, but did get an update from the trail manager. And one of the items there was a discussion on the $65 million grant that the Michigan Department of uh, Natural Resources is going to be providing for public recreation development. And I know that they've been working with, the trail has been working with the city's grant committee. And I think there was an initial discussion regarding, so the trail owns a half acre of land based on the way the railway ran, but that half acre is on the Clinton River Trail. Um, so it's kind of odd, right, that, that our trail would, would own that, that land, that piece of land. So there was discussion of resurfacing, I think putting in a kayak uh, launch, an observation deck, um, some interpretive signage for the Clinton Kalamazoo Canal that uh, ran right through there, that property. Mm -hmm. So the discussion at, at the Trailways Commission was um, there was no consensus. Uh, at best, so there's a lot of split uh, decision and opinion on whether a kayak launch is required, whether the observation deck would be needed, et cetera, et cetera. So this, this discussion will continue, uh, and I'll give a further update after next month's meeting. Mayor Pro Tem Selvia. Question to clarify, I heard a very big number, 65 million. Correct. But what is the portion that could be coming to our specific trail? So they're going to split it up in three tranches. So the first tranche released is $15 million. So we would just have to submit our plan for that project, and they would then allocate based on point system. Point system, right. Okay. So. Are we applying for the bridge? Um, I think we are yes, as well. That's the, yeah. that's the I mean, that's, main thing. That's obviously the yes. priority, yes. I think that one's already been applied or, or yeah, submitted. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, next is a report from the DDA liaison, uh, Council Member Harrison. Thank you, Mayor. A couple highlights that I wanted to share with everyone. There was a lot covered in this meeting, but. It was really exciting, honestly, because we recognize the 30-year anniversary of the Rochester Hills Public Library's building on Old Town Road, and also the 10-year anniversary for the Big Blue Bus. And we had a special appearance by the Big Blue Bus um, at the meeting so we could go and explore what all the children's books and offerings, so it was really nice to have that aspect to the meeting. And I. We also recognized uh, some years of service. There was 30 years um, for Trent Creative. So congratulations to our own Marilyn Trent for 30 years in business in the city of Rochester. 
And lastly, I wanted to, and I think the DDA, on behalf of the DDA, wants to invite everyone to their business development annual meeting on August 15th. So please RSVP to that. Councilmember Albrecht. I understand the Rochester Hills Public Library recognition, obviously uh, Marilyn Trent and her business for 30 years. What was the recognition for Vibe School of Dance? Isn't that a relatively new business? They were recognized for an anniversary in 2020, but we're not able we're not able to be there at this meeting. So they're going to get their recognition at the next one. So I wanted to save the details of that for the following meeting. So it's an anniversary of their business. Okay, thank you. <coughs> I want to say five years, maybe. Mm, I don't think it's not that long. long. Okay. I can't remember. I, can't I, I want to save it for okay. you know build up for the <laughs> next meeting. Um, and then finally is a report from the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission did, did not meet the other this month. Um, we had an issue with the quorum in the July, so we are meeting on August 1st. Um, that should be a pretty busy meeting. Uh, next is any further public comment? Okay, now on to general miscellaneous. Um, Mr. City Manager, anything? Yes, and, you're, and just I'd like to note in your package, um, there's a recognition of uh, one of our students and residents' uh, son who uh, did the Eagle Scout project, and it's it's really cool. It's I would like to have have him here, but times are a little bit different. So I told his mom and, and the young man that we would put it in the packet. It gets online, get it out the best we can. And his project, he worked with Pat McKay at. Man who's in farms, and he found literally and unearthed the foundation of one of the old structures and backbreaking work. And his um, sister is when she got her award, uh, she did the flag boxes that she donated to the police department and to the DPW. So when you have flags that are donated, you have to have a special box. And so this is a very um, creative and energetic family. So we thank them profusely and uh, sent them a nice letter. And, uh, telling them that the city council and all the staff is very proud of them. So um, it was great. And our sidewalk program update is in your packet. The um, You don't have to come to the business development meeting if you don't want to. I talk way too long at that thing. And um, and then I think we'll, we'll talk Just about at that thing? Now. What's that? Just at that thing? Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, Madam Clerk. Uh, a couple election updates. Um, public access test for the voting equipment is Wednesday at noon, um, and we will be open on Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. for absentee ballots or registrations or any other election-related issues. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. City Attorney? Uh, nothing. Thank you. Okay. Um, tonight, I think we will start with, uh, for miscellaneous, we will start with Councilmember Harrison. Thank you, Mayor. At the last meeting, I mentioned that I will uh, be resigning my city council member seat, leaving a vacancy. It's been my honor to serve the city of Rochester for the past two and a half, almost three years. Um, I have taken a new position as a community engagement manager for the city of Wheat Ridge, Colorado, so just outside of Denver. This is an excellent career opportunity for me, so it's bittersweet that I submit my resignation. I've, I've served the city council since 2019, and I've just been so impressed with the residents and my fellow council members. I feel that we've accomplished so much, and I'm proud to work with the staff and administration who keep the city a place that I am proud to call my home. The city is being left, I believe, in very capable hands with my fellow council members and administration. And I just wanted to mention a couple of the highlights during my, my term uh, serving on the budgeting committee. Uh, we worked to preserve the city's AAA bond rating. We oversaw budget surpluses and enjoyed a unanimous approval on the 2022 and 2020 budget proposals. I think that shows a strong uh, leadership within the city and a strong city council. I also oversaw two mural projects in the city and helped to promote, promote native plant gardens on the City Beautiful Commission. And we all as a team oversaw the development of the new DPW campus and uh, welcomed a new 
uh, ambulance to our fleet. So all important things. I um, currently serve as the liaison for the Downtown Development Authority, the Sister City Committee, the City Beautiful Commission, the Rochester Area Youth Assistance League, and uh, always announced the hometown Christmas parade and served on that as well. And all of those committees, as well as all of you, I believe are invited to come to the City Tavern tonight to see me off if you'd like to join after the council meeting. Thank you. Um, do we need a motion? Yes, Your Honor, to accept her resignation. So why don't we have a motion and then if people want to say something before we vote, they can. Motion to accept the resignation of Amanda Harrison from City Council as she relocates to Colorado. So motion by Councilmember Albrecht. Support. Support. Support by Councilmember Peterson. Discussion. Councilmember Albrecht, you want to? I didn't want to make the motion <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I know. Well, we we can still vote. I, I, um, um, I, I met Amanda on the campaign trail, uh, and um, uh, we've we've had a, a special bond. You know, I would go up to the doors and see her campaign materials. I didn't take them down. I left them there, and I was as I left mine, and yeah. and we and we you know <laughs> went through we went through all the growing pains together. We went to the training for new city council uh, members together up in in um, uh, Frankenmuth. So um, I, we we've grown together on on city council. I'm sad to see her go. Um, I understand the reason she's going and, and wish her wish her all the best, but uh, I, I will miss her personally and professionally. So thank you, Amanda, for all you've done for City Council and for Rochester. Thank you. Councilmember Sage. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, too, want to recognize Amanda. Um, from a perspective of uh, your contribution to Council um, and being my neighbor, uh, we didn't agree on everything. But what I truly appreciated most was the way you presented your view because it made me think about my view and it gave me uh, consideration for how to make a decision, a good decision. And that's what I've most appreciated about your contribution here on this council. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Peterson. Yes, thank you. And I want to say thank you as well because it was that collaboration of your insights and your ideas for different things that we discussed that um, did make even myself think about different things as well. I think it's important that that collaboration is here, um, even with whoever comes in for any of these seats in the future. Um, it's very important. We can all learn from each other. I'm very jealous you're going back to where I was. So um, I wish you the best there. But you will be missed. Thank you. Yes, it's a pleasure to know you. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Thank you. All right, Add, adding on to the, the kudos for Amanda, you will truly be missed. Uh, I have really enjoyed working with you. You're very thoughtful, very insightful, an excellent communicator, and I'm really happy to have, have been able to serve with you. And um, I know that wherever the journey of life takes you, whether it be Wheat Ridge or beyond, I know that Rochester is still going to be, have a big place in your heart. Always. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I did um, um, get a gift on behalf of City Council for you, and I could give it to you later, but I thought, why not now? You can open it later, but I wanted you to know there's also something for Abby. <laughs> and most of Council has signed the card, but this is for Abby, and this is for you, a little piece of Rochester to take with you. And um, I just need two more council members to sign the card. <laughs> I came right late for a reason. I know, I try. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and I would just like to say, um, oh, I'm sorry, Doug, thank you. <laughs> Councilor Gould. I don't want to say anything. Well, I haven't known you quite as well, long as everybody else, but I've always been uh, honored to serve with you. And I think uh, one of the biggest things that you can accomplish in anything you do is to leave whatever you've touched in better shape than when you started. And you clearly have done that, not only through the art, but through all of your activities on here. It's been a pleasure and good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Doug. Um, and I'd just like to say first, good luck with your new position out there in Colorado. Um, I'm sure you'll do well, even though I <coughs> didn't know you were allowed to ever, anybody was ever allowed to leave Rochester. <laughs> but I guess that happens. Um, also, I always 
thank people who take the time to run for office. I know it's difficult. It's time consuming. It's not always a lot of fun, but we need people to run for office and to serve in the in these positions of leadership. And so I truly appreciate you doing that and taking the time to do it. And I also appreciate you being very willing to work with other people, being able to disagree without being disagreeable, as, as they say, and being collaborative in the process. So thank you for your service here, and we wish you great luck in your future career. So welcome. All right, have a congratulations. And unfortunately, Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Vixen? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank you. Um, um, for now, further miscellaneous, Councilmember Sage? Uh, nothing this evening, sir. Councilmember Albright? Nothing, Mayor. Councilmember Peterson? Just one thing. Um, I wanted to thank all the students who put on the play Anastasia, and if no one got a chance to see it, you should go next time at Stony Creek High. It was the most amazing group of talent to the Summer Music Theater Group, and I've never seen a play that was so amazing. And these students, I mean, the main character was only in 10th grade, and you would have thought she was on Broadway. It was just magnificent. So if you guys hear of the next play coming up, you should really go out and see it. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem Salvia. Thank you. Yes, just a reminder that this Thursday night, 730 in the Municipal Park, it is the final music in the park for this season. It is our own Rochester Symphony. And <coughs> last week I was really pleasantly surprised to see all ages there. There were young little kids running around and you could actually talk to the people you came with and you didn't get shushed. And <laughs> there were seniors and people brought food. It was delightful. So hopefully the weather will be nice and you can come out and enjoy it. Councilmember Gould? Uh, nothing this evening. Thank you, sir. Okay. So thank you. So now we're going to have a consideration request for closed session to review and consider applications for employment for the position city manager. And we are going to go into closed session without the anticipation of coming back into public session. Motion to go into closed session without coming back. Motion by Councilmember Peterson. Support. Support by Councilmember Sage. Madam Clerk, the roll, please. Vixen? Yes. Salvia? Yes. Albrecht? Yes. Gould? Yes. Harrison? Yes. Peterson? Yes. Sage? Yes. Thank you. And we will take a five minute break. So, Councilmember Harrison, you can stay or you can go to your party. Go to your party. Oh, if you, I'm sorry. Whichever, you to to Alex. Ah. whichever you choose to. Thank you. Was Alex yeah, going to yeah, lead the vote early and often? Yeah. I, I wanted to just oh, grab oh, this before I see. But thank you. Whoa. Oh, 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 I treat these like oh. my child.